Hi, everyone. My name is Sadie Pitzenberger, and I'm a Chrome Enterprise Customer Success Manager based in New York City. I'm so excited to share support and troubleshooting tools and tips and best practices for Chrome OS with you today. Thank you so much for being here. Thanks, Sadie. Hi, everyone. I'm Angela Gauz, also a Chrome Enterprise Customer Success Manager based out of Google Chicago. Today, we're going to be talking about support and troubleshooting Chrome OS and Chrome Enterprise. And quick note, if you missed any of the previous sessions that we hosted this month from our other teammates uh, regarding adoption and deployment, best practices, SSO, or Google Admin Console best practices, you can check them out on demand after this session. Today, we are going to give you a review of 24 by 7 enterprise support flow, how to delegate super admins, and best practices to follow when submitting tickets. Additionally, we will review common issues and troubleshooting tips to help support your deployment at scale. That sounds like a great agenda, Sadie. Let's start by talking about where Google support is located. Can you fill us in? Yes, let's dig in. So for Chrome Enterprise customers, Google offers a 24 by 7 follow the moon model for email and phone support worldwide. From the Google Admin Console and Google Cloud Support Center, customers can easily submit and escalate tickets at the click of a button. Customers may also want to leverage partners for their deployment services, ranging from white glove enrollment to ongoing day-to-day -day support. We will share a list of Chrome Enterprise partners, partner resources, and the resources page at the end of this webinar. Wonderful. Now that we know where support is located, can you tell us a little bit about how tickets are triaged? This is an important question, Angela. Thank you for asking. Here we have highlighted the flow for our Google Cloud Enterprise Support Model. We equip our agents and technical support engineers to handle Chrome Enterprise cases and following best practices globally. Note, the first line of defense for our customers is their help desk. We will perform the initial triage highlighted in the slides. We have several tiers of validation throughout the support stages where our agents will gather necessary logs and conduct extensive research into our turtle knowledge base to identify and communicate any known issues. If an issue is widespread, a banner will be posted to the Google Cloud Support Center in the form of an announcement at the top of the page. Please check the Google Cloud Support Center to set up support managers and personnel, check known issues, and view upcoming deprecations, as well as access cases that may need escalation. In the final tier here on the right, if a regression has occurred, our product and engineering teams are looped in to execute a rollback if the changes are impacting our customers. In addition, we take steps to ensure that new test cases are added and perform postmortems in the event to ensure steps are taken to catch similar inc incidents in the future. Cool. So now that we know how a ticket is triaged, how would a customer actually go about creating this ticket? Ah, uh, yes. Step one. Here's how the initial process begins. Phone or email support can be accessed one of two ways, within the Google Admin Console homepage or directly from the Google Cloud Support Center. From the Google Admin Console homepage, simply click the question mark icon located in the blue banner to launch the Help Assistant in a new window. In the pop-out, type in what you're having issues with to prompt the assistant to suggest helpful articles that may help in your troubleshooting steps. To proceed with filing a ticket, click the phone option to populate the support number and enterprise PIN, or click the Chrome browser and devices bubble to launch the support portal. Please note that the support PIN does expire within 24 hours. And in the Google Cloud Support Center, once you're there, you can click the new case button on the home screen to log a new issue. Makes sense. So when we create a new ticket, what should we include in the initial information? Yes, this is a critical question. Before contacting Google for help, it is critical to gather the information necessary to assign it a priority that matches the impact that you're seeing at your organization. So a pro tip would be having your help desk gather as much information from users as possible before submitting the ticket. To expedite the case handling and improve our support experience, perform basic troubleshooting steps described in the Chrome Help Center articles and include as much detail as possible in the initial submission. This includes logs from the device or browser when possible. To provide a snapshot of Chrome Enterprise user and device policies, go to chrome colon forward slash forward slash policy page to export a JSON of the information and attach it to the case. From the admin console, you can access metadata about a device having issues in the Chrome Management Devices section and just simply click into the device to view that information. Another best practice and a pro tip from our deployment services is to CC a contact at the organization that may be able to help respond to cases in the event 
that cases run stale or that the submitter goes on vacation. Got it. Include the data points. So how would a customer go about generating the logs to put into said case? This is another common question and definitely an important one. Chrome logs can be collected a few ways depending on the type of issue and setup. If you experience TCP or IP problems with the Chrome browser or managed Chrome device, you can collect network logs or view network data using net export and net dash internals. The net logs are useful if you need to debug network problems, analyze performance, or connect support about a problem. You can grab network logs on the device by visiting chrome colon forward slash forward slash net dash internals. And in the browser, you can also type in file colon forward slash forward slash forward slash bar forward slash log forward slash chrome to access real-time logs on the device that are stored locally. These logs can then be found in the My Files Downloads folder. Lastly, you can capture system logs by going to go chrome colon forward slash forward slash net dash internals forward slash hashtag chrome OS. Wow, those logs sure sound useful. What if I want to analyze them before submitting to the ticket? Yes, this is a great, great question and a common question from customers as well. We do provide a self-help log analyzer tool for admins, and that can be found by searching for G Suite Toolbox in, in your Chrome browser. Once you grab those logs on the previous slide, you can simply copy and paste them over into the log analyzer to get the output and an analysis that you're looking for. Great. So now that we've covered how to enter a ticket and what to include within it, what if I'm a customer and I need to give access to someone else on my team to create their own ticket? Thank you for asking, Angela. We get this qu question quite a bit uh, during the onboarding phase. So in the next two slides, I'll show you how to accomplish this. The first step will be for you to add the user in the Google Admin Console by following the G Suite instructions for how to do so. Once that user is created, you'll need to assign them super admin privilege, which will essentially give them full access to the console and the Google Cloud Support Center. If you don't want to give them full access to the Google Admin Console, you can create them add super admin role and then remove all the privileges associated and just leave the support privilege so that they can access the Google Cloud Support Center and create cases. Once they are in the Google Admin Console, you can jump over to the Google Cloud Support Center and add them in the user management pane shown here on the screen. You'll do this by clicking the new user button on the left pane and navigating to the support manager and support personnel role assignment where you'll insert the email address to assign them that, that privilege. So delegating additional users to file cases ensures continuity in the rollout and takes the burden off the main super admin to be responsible for responding to all tickets in a timely manner. This helps scale your deployment. Woo! <laughs> we are learning so much. Uh, why don't we move on to common tips and tools? Starting with, when in doubt, reboot. Ha, indeed. A fun fact about Reboot, Angela, is that it solves the majority of issues and can be executed from turn down to startup in seven seconds. Wait, did you say seven seconds? Yes. Yes, I did. It's true. One of my favorite features of Chrome OS is its reboot speed. And another favorite feature for our IT admins is the fact that Chrome OS updates are installed in the background. So that means that users can quickly install the latest version while working and get that latest version with the reboot and when the upgrade is available so that they can be up and running in seconds rather than hours. This is a huge win for organizations switching to Chrome OS. Wow, that's incredible. And when would users need to reboot? Yes, reboots are necessary when users are seeing poor, poor performance, which can happen when running too many tabs or applications. Oh, you mean like when you told me last week when we were preparing for the session and I had 100 windows open? <laughs> exactly. Did it solve your issues? You know what? It definitely did. <laughs> That's great. Had it not solved your issues or your performance issues you and you noticed a lag in the reboot flow, on rare occasion, this may indicate the need to perform a hard reset. We'll get into this later when we talk about the troubleshooting OS issues. That sounds scary. What's a hard reset? Don't worry, Angela. Before you do this, it's a best practice to save all your local data before you perform a hard reset. And what this does, essentially, it resets the hardware to factory settings. Okay, phew. So how can users reboot their devices? Simply holding down the power button for three seconds will reboot the device. Okay. So reboot, check. Reset, check. What's next on our list of troubleshooting tips and tools? 
Yes, so given Chrome, Chrome devices update every six weeks, issues can occur when Chrome extensions need to be updated. A useful tool for users and admins alike is to navigate to Chrome colon forward slash forward slash extensions to check and up execute an update from the browser itself. As an admin, you can also enable developer options to show additional data about the extension and or load and unload unpacked extensions for advanced troubleshooting. To view the status of an extension or an app, admins can check in the Google Admin Console Chrome Management Apps and Extensions page to initiate an update from there, block or force installs, or simply remove the extension if it's causing issues. Got it. Chrome colon backslash backslash extensions. What other troubleshooting tips and tools are available in the Google Admin Console? Yes, depending on the deployment mode, admins have access to data about a device and user settings that can be provided to support in that initial case. Common examples include grabbing the IP address and MAC address, which are key to diagnose Wi-Fi connection issues. You can also check the auto update expiration date if devices stop receiving security updates. Admins may also be able to disable, reboot, clear user profiles, and move devices to a new OU as needed to isolate issues and continue troubleshooting. Okay, Sadie. So please tell me that there's good news. If I'm an IT administrator and I'm looking for some self-service options for my end users, is there hope for me? Do I have any resources to send to them? Yes, there is hope, Angela. Yes, there is hope. Uh, users can access Chrome OS built-in tools in a couple of ways on the device. So if, the, if they have access to the browser, they can simply type in Chrome colon forward slash forward slash help to launch the Chrome OS settings and click into the get help with Chrome OS option. Alternatively, they can just go straight to the device settings and click into about Chrome OS, get help with Chrome OS. Both of these options will launch the get help app, which is a tool that provides local network troubleshooting steps and tests that the end user can perform on their own before contacting support. Users can also click the fix a problem section to troubleshoot and run a diagnostics report if they're having connectivity issues. Lastly, when users are first learning how to use Chrome OS, you can get use the get started section to access how to articles and access the latest re release notes detailing new features that are available. Amazing. That was a super exhaustive list and thanks for running over those tips and tools with us. But what if we exhausted that list and my end user um, is still experiencing troubles? No worries. When users are unable to recover the device with tools, with the tools we just highlighted above, a few additional steps can be taken as a last resort. A factory OS version may need to be installed on the device to recover it. I'll show you how to do this in the following slides, and don't worry, it should take less than 25 minutes to get back to a working state. Okay, so troubleshooting, advanced troubleshooting tip number one. Yes, occasionally some users may report being unable to charge or turn on their device or having issues with the display, the touchscreen, keyboard, or touchpad. In most cases, a simple reboot of the device will kick off a fresh start and will get you back up and running. If a reboot doesn't work, then it's best to next try a hard reset by turning the device off and using the refresh plus power button, and then hit the refresh button again on the startup screen. This will reset the hardware like your keyboard and touchpad and may delete some files in the downloads folder. So be sure to upload any data to the cloud before performing this step. As a next step in tackling OS issues, you may want to check guest mode to isolate any issues that are tied to user settings. In addition, you can use the task manager to check the memory on the device by using the shift plus escape keys to terminate programs that are slowing performance. And if all else fails, go for the power wash option, which restores the device to factory settings. If the OS is still unable or damaged after the power wash, we have a free Chromebook utility tool to quickly recover and move forward, uh, which we will show you here in the slides. And what's the difference between a factory reset and a power wash? Yes, this is a common point of confusion for our customers. A hardware reset is done by using the refresh and power keys and impacts the hardware on the Chromebook. User data is not changed. And you can make your Chromebook run like new again by doing a factory reset. And if you no longer be using your device, you may want to do a factory reset. A power wash on the other hand, or a factory reset, impacts the user profiles where all Chrome OS user data and profiles are erased. When you power wash your Chromebook, you reset your Chromebook to factory settings. Uh, here's what the Chromebook utility tool looks like on the screen, uh, which is a free tool that you can access from the Chrome web store. And when it's time to wipe and reset the device, uh, restall, 
to the factory image using your USB recovery tool. So have USB recovery tools handy as you enroll devices, which will help complete the reset um, seamlessly. Okay, cool. Um, where can I find the recovery tool? Yes, uh, that is from the Chrome Web Store. You can download it from there. Cool. What other advanced um, tools and tips do we have here? Oh my gosh. Like as in if my end user experiences an error message, uh, missing or damaged operating system. Have no fear, Angela. Just use the Chromebook recovery tool. We just discussed to recover the device. Amazing. So let's summarize everything we just discussed. Perfect. So we've taught you how to troubleshoot common Chrome OS issues. We've shown you how to recover the OS in, in the event that you see OS issues. Uh, we've talked about how to delegate admins to scale your deployment. And we've also reviewed what our support model looks like. Now I'd like to share some of the common resources to bookmark to further your learning. All of these links will be available in the resources page located at the short link on the screen. To grab the builds necessary for the recovery tool, you can visit the Omaha proxy link here to find specific models and versions for the devices you have in your fleet. You can also check our new and improved policy list page, which is an easily searchable index of 200 plus management policies that Chrome OS supports today. And don't forget to subscribe to our handy Chrome OS and browser release notes, updated every six weeks per release. To find our help center, type in Chrome Enterprise Support in your browser to locate our latest deployment assets, including change management and adoption toolkits and remote worker resources. We also keep the known issues list updated per release, so I encourage you to check it out when you have time and refer to this page before filing a case with Google support. Okay, so one more time, all of these great links and tips and tools are going to be available on the resources section of the Chrome on Air site. Is that right? Yes, exactly. We made it to the end. Amazing. Thanks, Sadie, for walking us through all of these amazing tips and tools for support and troubleshooting Chrome OS today. And thanks, everyone, for joining us today. We really appreciate your time. Now that you're all experts, Sadie, what can our friends expect to see next on Chrome on Air? Yes, if you enjoyed the session today, don't forget to join us in the next session on August 19th. Thank you so much for joining. We're so excited to have you be a part of the Chrome OS family.